Hey everybody, it's Nick again, and today's video we're going to talk about configuring Entra External ID. Now, what is Entra External ID? Basically, it is the new and improved uh, external identity provider that's all part of Entra. It's just part of the progression of new exciting stuff. It's not Azure ADB to C renamed. It's actually a whole new thing. It maybe replaces ADB to C, ADB to C. Um, that's still viable as well. It's just more legacy. Um, but today we're going to go through the steps to configure it. Now, this video I realize may be out of date very soon because in April 2025, there is going to be a wizard process. Now, I still think it's important to go through all of these steps so you understand if you do need to make some specialized tweaks or configuration just to understand the process. And then also, there's a site setting for you to understand of whether you're going to use the default um, method to get a user ID in Power Pages or whether you configure it to use the actual object ID. And now this is something I know some people were stuck on. This is gonna be a fairly technical video. Um, we're gonna be going through a lot of steps. Hopefully this is very helpful. There is a companion blog post, so if you're more the reading type uh, to read steps, you can go to that. But if you're more to watch and see where I click, hopefully this helps. So let's just dive right into it. So I'm here on the entra.microsoft.com site. I've logged into my tenant and I've gone here into, I'm gonna go in and manage tenants. And I have a list here of a bunch of tenants I've already created. They're probably gonna be blurred out when I edit this video. Um, I'm just gonna hit here, create. And we're gonna choose a configuration for the tenant. Now we can either choose a workforce. Now that's your typical Azure AD kind of style thing. But we're gonna, this is for Power Pages. So this is gonna be for external sites. So we're gonna choose this. We're just gonna hit continue and basically give it a, a tenant name and a domain name and things like that. So for here, good old Contoso, let's uh, do put in the word for Contoso here. So I've given it a tenant name. Now I need to give it an actual domain name. And once it's been set, we can't change it. We're gonna choose a country or a region. Again, we should put this closer to a same geography as to where your Power Pages site is. I'm gonna put it actually into Canada. Um, that's where I'm located. We're all good here and we pick this and now we're gonna to go to the next step where we're going to need to add a subscription to this particular tenant. Um, I have an MSDN subscri subscription, I'm gonna use that. You might have others, you can do a pay as you go or you can set up other ones. A resource group, I always like to create new resource groups for these things, so I'm just gonna create a new one. I'm just gonna call that resource group, um, intro demo, cool, cool, cool. Or I could have used an existing resource group um, group location, East US, again, I'm just gonna choose Canada. Let's choose Canada Central. That's probably closest to me geographically. And monthly active users, you'll not be charged for MIUs as features currently in preview. I don't know what the pricing licensing, I'm pretty sure that's easy to find if you're uh, very interested in. You probably would be if you're going into a production scenario. Let's hit review and create. Uh, everything looks cool. Validation has passed, meaning our URLs are unique and we hit the create button and then we wait for the spinner and it's going to create the tenant it's going to create the resource group and we're going to move on to the next step and this is going to take a few minutes so i'll be right back all right we're back and the tenant was successfully created i can basically click here to navigate to the new tenant let's just do this now it's going to ask me to sign in again just because again security okay i've gone through the authentication process i'm actually logged in uh, with my account into this new um, tenant that we created that we're going to use for external services. So this is all well and good. Now, just keep this uh, tab open basically, because what we're going to need to do is now go over and configure the Power Pages identity provider for Entra External ID. So we're going to pop over into the Power Pages Design Studio. I've already provisioned a brand new website here. You can see just using one of the templates, of course, you can use Copilot or use a blank template or use one of the Dynamics 365 templates, totally up to you. I'm gonna go into the security section here and we're into identity providers. Let's just make this screen a wee bit bigger for y'all. And basically here we have, um, we will have in a second the list of the identity providers come up. So here we have the local sign-in. And again, I've talked about this in other videos. Local sign-in is something that's great for training or experimenting, but really in a production scenario, you should be using an external identity provider. Um, I am kind of noodling with the idea of making a video and just showing you where this is not secure. Um, so maybe when you see that, you'll kind of be convinced. 
Um, but for now, let's just keep going. Um, we have the Entra ID, of course, that's for your internal users. And we hear the Microsoft Entra external ID, which you still see is in preview. This is February, 2025. Um, and we still have a lot of the other ones, of course, that we can use. I'm gonna click on the configure button here. And again, we're picking our provider. We're picking our protocol as OpenID Connect. We could give this a provider name, Microsoft Enter External. I'm gonna leave with the defaults in for now, but again, you could call that something a little bit different depending on what your needs are. I'm gonna hit next. And then basically we need to create a new external tenant. We've done this already. That was the first step. We've created that external tenant. It does kind of point you to this to learn how to create it. I found those instructions a little bit convoluted. That's partially why I'm doing this video and did that blog. Really more for myself when I have to do this in six months for a client. Um, but here we have the registry application. So I'm gonna to need to copy this reply URL. So I've copied that. Um, so we have that done so what i now need to do is go and register this application so now that i've got that we're going to go back into our tenant so i'm back here at the uh the contoso demo boost one that we've created or actually no sorry add app registrations so i'm going to do this and like i said a lot of features and places to go navigate around so you can get lost pretty quickly uh external facing name i'm just going to call that uh, contoso boost 2025. Again, something you remember. Um, and here, do we want to have accounts in this organizational directory only? Do we want to have other options here? I'm just going to leave the uh, top option here. Um, anybody in this demo? And then this is where we're going to choose that redirect URI. That's what we got from Power Pages. I'm going to choose web and I'm going to paste in the value that I copied earlier. So I've got this all well and good. And now we want to hit that register button. And then very quickly, it's created that app registration. Now, the other thing we need to do, uh, go into the authentication tab and we have the redirect here. Well, the other thing we're gonna need to do is go to the implicit grant and hybrid flows and turn on the access tokens and the ID tokens. Um, you're gonna need that for um, part of the authentication process. Uh, the supported account types are all good here. Um, and then yeah, let's just hit save. And then now while I'm here, once this is saved, I'm gonna go into the API permissions tab and I'm gonna make sure that we have grant admin consent for Contoso Demo Boost. We're going to need to do this. So we're gonna click on that. Yes, I wanna give uh, grant consent acts. Grant consent successful. Good, we got that done. Let's uh, move on to the next step. We're gonna to have to set up some user flows now. So I'm gonna go into the external identities. So here on the side, and we're gonna choose user flows. Now, we don't have any user flows here. We can create a new user flow. Now, in the event that you have something disabled here, underneath, um, you have to go to the external collaboration settings, and you'll need to do that from the, the upper uh, higher tenant level to be able to um, enable this. So I do have a screenshot in the blog post, but just remember if you it is blocked out, you are going to have to go and turn that on. Um, again, according to your own security policies, I'll let you do that research. So I'm back here at the new user flows. I'm going to create a brand new user flow and I'm just going to call this uh, power-pages contoso boost. And then I'm gonna choose here uh, through email accounts, emails with a passcode or email a one-time passcode. You can pick whatever you want here. I'm gonna just pick the one-time passcode. Then we can also pick some user attributes, maybe just to collect some of that information. So I'm gonna choose the given name and the surname. Um, we're gonna, and we could pick other things here. We could show more uh, things that we can collect as part of that. This is all I'm picking for now. And now let's just hit create. All right, now we've created, successfully created our user flow. Next thing we need to do is go in and, all right, so what I'm gonna hear, I'm gonna go into this user flows and then I'm gonna go into applications. And here I'm gonna have to add an application. So I'm gonna click on this. And now we should already see the application that we created earlier. So here's that Contoso Boost 2025. Let's select this and we're gonna select that. And it's saving these settings. So just off to the side here, I'm gonna choose app registrations. I'm gonna choose all applications and we see here again, here's that app 
uh, registration that we created. I'm going to go here and this is where all the good stuff is that we're going to need to copy over in our Power Pages site. So I'm going to need the client ID. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. And then there's a couple endpoints we're going to need to capture as well. So I'm going to go into those endpoints. I'm going to choose the authority URL. So let's copy this to the clipboard. And then the other thing we're going to need is the open ID connect metadata document because that's a bit of a mouthful. Let's uh, grab a copy of this. That's all well and good. Now we're going to flip back to power pages. So I do realize we are bouncing back and forth a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the identity provider and here we've created those slights. We've created the user flow and let's, uh, we've added the application. Let's just hit next. So here's the client ID. So if we remember, we're going to put in the client ID, which should just be a GUID, the authority ID. We're going to put in the authority, which is the one here, that first one that we put in. And then we already have the re redirect URI. This is something that, that's unique to your Power Pages site. So if you are actually moving your site to downstream environments, this is uh, these are settings that you'll have to redo. Now I am planning on doing a video on how this is gonna be done um, using site settings um, and um, environment variables. That's still a feature that's yet to being rolled out. So I hopefully that will be ready in the next week or two. So I'll be able to show you the video on that. Metadata address, let's just put that through here as well. We got that here. And we know it's the metadata, metadata address because we have that dot well known open configuration. Good, hit next. Um, basically we can go through and make adjustments to some of these other settings. I'm just gonna leave the defaults for now. Um, look at everything here, that looks cool. Review and finish, hit close. And now Microsoft Enter ID is enabled. Or is it? Now this is something that it is called out in the documentation, but it's just very brief. So I, I'm going to highlight this here. What you're going to want to do is move up into the setup and get rid of Copilot here. And then basically we're going to navigate to the admin center. This is going to take us to the Power Platform admin center where we're going to need to actually restart the site for these settings to take, to take hold basically. So I'm into my website configuration. Um, if you've been working with Power Pages, you've probably been in here a few times already, setting things up like your certificates and uh, custom domain names. I'm just gonna go into site actions and I'm gonna hit restart site. And basically it's gonna restart the whole site because we're gonna need to do that to kick in the enter external ID provider. So while we're waiting for the site to reboot, uh, it's actually gonna come up as a service unavailable. How I got there was through the design studio. We just hit preview. If you've seen my videos, you've seen me do this a thousand times, um, but we're still waiting for the restart to happen and that will finish up in just a few minutes. All right, so we actually have my sites now come up. Let's go in and we see now that we have the Microsoft Entra external ID provider. Let's just select this. And we see we now have a sign in for uh, enter external ID. And again, this can be customized. Um, now, if I had an account already, I could sign in, but I don't have an account. So I'm going to create a new one, um, give myself. And then basically, because we had it to send a one-time passcode, it's going to send that to my email account. So it's okay for me to share this. Hit next. Now, again, remember we set up those claims that we want to actually get some of this information. So I'm going to put in my name here and going to hit next. And we're into the profile page. So if you, we thought that shows us that we've successfully signed in, I can fill in the rest of my info here. And then of course, just hit update. And then now I am actually signed in to the Power Pages site using Enter External ID. So that's pretty cool. Now, I know part of what I showed in a, another video of how to migrate existing users. So I do wanna point something out here. I'm going to go into the Power Pages management app. And of course, we can access that through the Design Studio. And again, quick little recap, the Power Pages management app is a model driven app that really is a pointer into the metadata that's stored in Dataverse for our Power Pages sites. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to take a look at for the contacts. Now, remember, again, another recap, contacts in Power Pages are actually users for our power pagers users have to be stored as dataverse contacts so here's one of my contact records i'm going to look into this i'm going to go into web authentication now what you're going to notice is by default 
For the username, we have this big, long, ugly string, and I actually have that in my external identity uh, here, this big, long, ugly string. I, for the life of me, cannot find anywhere in Entra external ID where this ID is. Now, one of the folks at Microsoft kind of explained it to me that there's actually subclaims and other things. There's a different handshaking process. Stuff going on in the background that's generating this that we don't have access to. So what can we do to be able to link those up if we wanted to import external um, users and link them up to existing contacts or create new contacts? Well, what we need to do is add a site setting. So let me show you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is basically for this particular website, and I do have a couple, here's the one I just created. I'm gonna go into my site settings. And again, I could have navigated it from to the side. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a brand new site setting. And that site setting name is called Authentication Open ID Connect. And I have to put in the provider name and then object identifier as named identifier claim enabled. What that basically means, it's going to use the Entra external ID object ID, which is a GUID that you can see in Entra. So if I were to go into back into my Entra tenant here um, and take a look at the users, for example. So here's my users. I actually see here this object ID is something that I would like to actually use as my username. So to do this, I'm gonna go back into the Power Pages uh, site here. I'm going to have this authentication provider. I'm gonna set that value to true. And the other thing I need to do is capture the actual name of that provider so I could fill that in. All right, so I'm back here. I need to put in that provider name, which, I, which we got, which is OpenID1. You can see that from the other settings. I'm just gonna hit save here. And we have that all set up. That's all cool. So what, now what I need to do is go in and actually restart the website again. And then once I've restarted that website, then I should be able to go and see the GUID of that user. So I'm gonna go actually, instead of going through all those steps, let's just take a look at an existing contact here that I've set this up earlier. Um, here's Road a Bike. And I've configured this, and now you see here for this particular username, it is using the GUID. It is in the external identities using a GUID and not that long string. So what that basically means is if you already have users that are sitting in Entra external IDs and you want to migrate those over to use Power Pages and not have those users go through the whole signup process, what you can do is bring that and migrate these as external identities. I do have another video explaining how to do this in Azure AD B2C and Okta. It's basically the same for Entra as well. So I hope this video was uh, enlightening to you. Hopefully it was very helpful. Um, remember, Entra external IDs are still in preview, so they're not really meant for production. They're meant for you to experiment and try, but I do know that there are some projects out there um, that are actually using this right now very successfully. So again, totally up to you. And then the other thing too is, like I said, there is a wizard coming out in a couple months that could probably streamline this process. But again, I think it's important to know all the steps in case you do need to go and configure those things, such as those claims, such as those um, being able to use the object IDs and that type of thing. It's kind of good to know how these things work under the hood. All right, thanks for watching this video and I look forward to the next one.